Welcome to the Agile Project Management with PRINCE2 webinar hosted today by Quint Wellington Redwood. Good that you can join us. Very happy to have you on board and we'll get started right away. The presenters for today are myself, Frank Frombach, Global Manager for Quint Solutions, and Francesco Cagnu, my colleague from Italy, who is a principal consultant and lead trainer. So he's our subject matter expert who will take us through the material today as we uh, listen to him. Before we go to the content, I would quickly just like to introduce Quint Wellington Redwood for those people who may not know us yet. Um, sometimes we have new people on the, these sessions, so it's good to go over it very quickly. Quint was the, established in 1992 in Amsterdam as an independent consulting uh, firm. We, at this moment, have more than 250 consultants and an annual revenue of about $50 million. And we operate in a lot of countries, 49, and we have global offices in seven, ranging from uh, the US in the West to Japan in the Far East. If you look at our core business, very often I think of it it's, as a change within organizations related to IT. And uh, we see that a lot of topics there are things like sourcing, architecture, governance, lean IT, service management. And Quinn has been ranked as the total uh, advisor on uh, sourcing and governance for a number of years now and uh, also for 2015 the IAOP, International Association of Outsourcing Professionals, has ranked us as the world's best outsourcing provider. Quinn is recognized through the market as a um, thought leader in areas such as service management and in lean and the Lean IT Association, for instance, uh, has been grounded together with Quint, and Quint is one of the main initiative takers for the Lean IT Association. If you look at the areas of business, Quint is operating in mainly uh, consulting and education, and the education is very closely knit to the consulting area. From the background in the reality where the consultants are operating day by day and seeing the uh, actual happening of the business, this is related back to the learning and also a lot of learning and interaction happens during these projects. Therefore, the shortest route to accredited uh, training materials is directly from Quinn Solutions, your portal for expertise directly to you. Quint Solutions is basically the side of Quint that enables our partners to, to do their business, how shall I say, even better and more efficient than they maybe could by themselves. And we do that with a number of uh, services that we offer our partners. An important one of that is, for instance, courseware. We develop our own course material, which in a lot of cases, almost all cases, develop by our subject matter experts who are our own consultants like Francesco who's one of them and he'll be speaking about this later. We have e-learning because people want to learn in multiple ways not only in classroom but also on the go on their uh, te telephones or tablets or, or laptops wherever they are. Our trainers and consultants uh, are at the disposal of our partners too to help them to uh, bring higher value even to their customers and also open up new territories. And along with that, we offer the uh, exam and accreditation services so that our partners can offer exams to, uh, to their candidates. Through operational excellence, we try to make the processes as smooth and as easy and as least time consuming as possible. And if you look at the portfolio, that is really backed up by a strong expertise within our Quint consulting area. So all of this makes for quite a unique combination between consulting and learning where you see that the one feeds off of the other and uh, enhances the power of the other. The quality we have comes through our focus and the strong thing there is that we don't do everything but we try to stay close to our roots and where our strength lies and do those things that we think that we're best at and bring those on to our partners. I already quickly spoke about the global presence and as you can see on the map here are the dots that we are across the globe and uh, through this global presence we can also do a follow the sun support to our partners and our customers uh, across the time zones across the world. So for those of you who may not be working with us yet today but are interested in how you can team up with us, there's a lot of ways. The easiest one is either to contact myself or anybody else you know within Quint, go to quintgroup.com or to solutions.quintgroup.com. 
So there are multiple ways you can uh, get in touch with us. After this uh, session, you will also get an email with the information about the session, and obviously from there you can uh, relate back to us and come get in touch with us. Looking at the session for today, uh, first of all, you, when you got the invite, there were uh, two sessions uh, in, the, in the invite. The first session was done earlier today, and this is the second session, which is identical to the first one. So if you think that you may have missed something with the other, worry, they were the same. It's just so that we can service everybody in different time zones around the world. Should you have any questions along the way, uh, then please feel free to put them in the question and answer box as we have everybody on mute. Reason for that being that if we had everybody speaking that it would be very difficult to keep everybody out of each other and understand exactly the questions. So do feel free to uh, put your questions in the Q&A box which you will find on your screen and we will answer all these questions at the end of the presentation. The presentation is going to be approximately 30 minutes uh, and we've reserved maximum of 10 minutes for questions and answers. Uh, reality will probably be that that will be closer to five and that the presentation will be somewhere around about 25 minutes. We're recording this session so that it's going to be available for you later, either to revisit it or in case you may not be able to uh, stay for the full session, then you can still listen to it on the recording as we'll have it ready for you later. So why did we uh, plan this webinar? First of all, we wanted to tell you a little bit more about Prince2 Agile and introduce the framework to you. Talk about how the, the blending and tailoring of it works around Prince2 and Agile and talk about the key elements within Prince2 Agile. Then we want to inform you who the target audience is for this program and how you can get accredited or do your test and become uh, certified in it. And uh, we will talk about the course and certification on that matter as well. So I'd like to hand over to our presenter today, Francesco Cagno, and I'd rather let him introduce himself because uh, I think he's the main expert on that. And he will take you through the Prince to Agile presentation today. Francesco, over to you. Thanks, thanks Frank for your introduction. Well, on, on myself, just a, a couple of maybe relevant things about my experience. Uh, I've been uh, working in several uh, big international firm and firms in the past and uh, as Frank already said, I'm a good representative of uh, the, the normal trainer or consultant in, uh, in Quint. We have together uh, classroom experience and project experience and I would say that uh, each of, of those environments uh, gets benefit from the other because because uh, when we are in projects we can still remember I'm gonna say the theory where it came from and then adapt it to the to the context and on the other hand when we are in the classroom we can actually bring uh, real life uh, experiences regarding the subject of what we're talking today um, I'm in one of the the I'm mainly in one of the business area that Frank mentioned before, um, namely the Lean IT Agile uh, practice and uh, I also am pretty proud to, be, to say that I have uh, uh, the privilege to be the product owner for one of our uh, simulation games which is called Crazy Kitchen. I was one of the creators that give uh, also um, a real uh, a touch of uh, real life to our courses. Uh, we use this kind of uh, subject in the in the class in the classes. Thanks. We can go ahead. So, why are organization looking to agile, and why uh, at the end uh, there was this uh, a join, this, uh, this coupling with uh, with Prince2? Uh, agile is uh, it's a way of uh, dealing with uh, with projects or other in general terms other initiatives uh, avoiding to do a big invest in, investment at the beginning in uh, uh, getting the requirements and uh, in this slide you may see the compared the traditional waterfall project when you invest a lot at the beginning and then you start producing and at the end of the period you actually see mm, something that's useful usable uh, in agile and agile approach, uh, you go into iterative, iterative and incremental uh, 
requirement collection and the production so that you can actually see th things going into into production and to be used uh, also during the project and then get some feedback from that and this is uh, the, the way the most of the organization prefer to work uh, in, in recent times next please so that's about agile in general terms uh, why coupling Prince 2 and agile I would say that, uh, okay, percentages apart, the thing is that I observed that uh, many organizations like the agile approach because it's uh, more open, more uh, best practice adaptable, but uh, unfortunately many organizations in my experience start from the agile indications and they start removing whatever they don't uh, like or they think is too much bureaucracy and at the end often projects and initiatives do not go well and uh, at the end the most of the blame is, up, is on Agile. Uh, now probably that's because uh, there is a not correct application of the adaptation concept but the reason why they coupled, coupled uh, Prince2 with Agile uh, is that Prince2 on the other hand is a prescriptive uh, methodology for project management that is adaptable, uh, adaptable actually but is adaptable according to certain rules that are given by Prince2 itself. So Agile, Prince2 Agile is uh, pretty much a tailoring of Prince2 itself that um, gets benefit to the structure offered by Prince2 and includes uh, many uh, useful elements of uh, delivery that are missing actually in the Prince2 general um, approach, general uh, framework. Next please. So Prince2 and Agile, well, we can go ahead in the, the next one. Um, it's about tailoring. Tailoring is not a word used, um, I'm going to say, by chance. It's actually the term used in the Prince2 uh, literature to uh, explain how you can actually adapt Prince2 to your own environment. There is a specific part of the, of the handbook, of the program, uh, where it's explained how you can actually uh, take Prince2 as it is and adapt it to your, your uh, context, um, giving you also the condition in which you can actually make this kind of tailoring. And I like the word tailoring because it's, um, I would say, a good term to indicate that you are not actually taking and making from, uh, from your, your suit, your, your, your dress from uh, just, you know, raw materials. You have pretty much the, the suite in place, but you still have uh, open parts, like could be uh, you know, sleeves or other parts of the of the of the dress uh, that you, you can actually tailor to your own environment. And how much and in what conditions you can tailor, it's written, is specified in the Prince2 manual itself. So. How does this relates? Uh, how does how do this relates to to uh, agile mm, from Prince2? Mm, the, a certain number of uh, guidance points were were created to help people and professionals to understand how they can actually what they can expect from Prince2 agile. First of all, as to be clarified, that Prince2 is not actually. Um, a traditional waterfall um, approach is a, a, an open approach which has been used for many years mainly um, as a waterfall approach but it's uh, as I was saying it's open thanks to the, its tailoring uh, embedded uh, uh, part to be adapted to context so one of the adaptation for sure is uh, is with the, the agile approach um, and uh, so just to clarify, Prince2 itself uh, is a generic purpose uh, project management uh, methodology. It's not only for IT, even though, of course, being part of the best practice uh, from uh, currently Axelos, formerly OGC, like ITIL, for example, in m many cases you see it applied in IT. Uh, environment, but it's not only for that, and the same can be said with uh, with Prince2 Agile. What can be said is that the reason why you would like to go for you may want to go for a Prince2 Agile uh, um, project is that you have your environment which is cre is uh, evolving pretty quickly, uh, and then uh, an environment in which you have uh, strict uh, time constraints 
and so for sure high technology and IT uh, situations are this kind of situation where you have this kind of constraints. Um, in the Prince2 Agile course where here and there there are reference to uh, business uh, software development or other IT techniques but there are only reference for examples just because the most of people in this kind of classes is usually from us got usually that background but it's not that's not uh, absolutely something that goes a lot into details uh, agile takes stuff from from the scrum uh, approach even though uh, there is more into agile than scrum, scrum and actually there is also parts of scrum which are not actually used into agile is uh, there, there are so there is a certain amount of uh, concepts and, and terms and approaches that are useful in the project management uh, environment scrum is more than that is not only for project management in this case they are covered in the in the course in the in the course so uh, let's say that the, 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 there are, there are uh, for sure a certain amount of uh, uh, techniques also uh, taken from other words like for example uh, Lean, uh, Six Sigma, um, until they are useful for a project uh, environment they may be referred to uh, because we have to remember that this both Scrum, Lean, etc. are not, not only for projects. Term Agiles uh, this is relevant uh, is, uh, is uh, in general terms uh, of course referred to a certain amount of uh, tools of techniques etc but also very important to consider that's uh, a lot about behavior and attitude if you don't actually believe uh, that you are looking at the correct and proper way of dealing with a project with agile probably to, it won't work it actually it's not about saying that you make a project uh, agile or not. Today there are always re um, situation of uh, evolution of the requirement. So it's about how much agile your project should be and how much of it you can actually apply into your, in your environment. Next please. Here we see the reason why I was saying that you get both uh, the, the best, let's say, of uh, Prince to and of uh, agile in uh, in this uh, approach, meaning that on one side you have Prince to giving you the the strong structure of government governance of a project, and uh, on the other side, on the lowest side of this cake, uh, which is a representation uh, of of a project in, in Prince to agile, you have uh, uh, the more the part which is more related to the production. The three layers of these cakes are related to a, a Prince2 concept that we also may find in other project management uh, approaches. Uh, you have a, a governance high level uh, part, which is the, the higher part, the top of this cake, uh, where you see the concept of project direction. Prince2 is, and also Agile in general terms, is not only about the project manager role. It's about a, a upper level of governance which is given to a steering committee, in this case called project board, which has got the, the higher level uh, of, uh, of governance of the project. Then you have the part of the, the management of the project itself, which is the middle uh, layer, which is still uh, taken advantage to the structure offered uh, from Prince2 and from the, 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 the role, uh, the very central role of the project management. A project manager and then you have the delivery level which is uh, not very much described in Prince2 it's left to you know production technique technicalities that is enriched here in this uh, in this approach by the agile part so this part is covered more by the agile uh, techniques and and approaches and of course you have all the interfaces uh, between the two the two uh, words this way you can actually expect to have on one side uh, all the control on the, the, the elements of governance that you need to be sure that you are not going far from uh, uh, a control environment. Let, we may want to remember that the, the Prince word uh, contains the, the, the C state for control, but on the other hand you take advantage from the possibility to, uh, to adapt Prince2, uh, including all the ag agility offered by the Agile approach. Next, please. So, 
how do the two words um, connect? In the very center, you see um, the, uh, the very common uh, picture for people who knows about prints. It's a uh, it's a way of uh, including all the main elements of Prince Two. There is one thing I, I didn't see, say before. Uh, Prince Two is based on a certain amount of seven uh, phrases. Those phrases are called the Prince Two principles. One of the principles is about the possibility to tailor and adapt to the context. It's one of the guidelines that are given. And so uh, from this you can say from the very beginning that Prince2 was uh, open to a certain amount of adaptation. Agile uh, is one of, of, of them. Uh, in general terms, the principles of Prince2 are give, telling you the reason why you do certain things in a project uh, covered by Prince2. Then you have the processes that organize the, the work in the journey of Prince2. Uh, in this case, the processes are going to tell you when you have to do things. And then you have the themes, which are chapters in the manual, that are told, telling you uh, how to do things. So principle for why, processes to say you uh, when, and uh, the, the way you do it, how you do it, are given by the themes. This is Prince2. On this, which is a structure pretty complete to, to uh, govern a, a project, what is actually out of it or only touched uh, by this is the delivery of the technical part, uh, which is the, the one closer, the closer one to the, the requirement collection and to the uh, actual production. That, that's the part where Agile comes in with a certain amount of techniques, with the, with the concept we are going to cover shortly, and especially with the, the introduction of a, um, a behavior and attitude that you want to have in place to be successful with, with this kind of approach. Next, please, we can see some a few uh, a few uh, key elements. Uh, first of all which is one of the typical uh, uh, trends, uh, opposite trends. On, uh, on one side, the customer wants everything and wants to be also um, followed in, in their, uh, their uh, changing their minds. On the other side, it often happens that uh, they actually do not get everything, but often what happens is that they are not uh, getting the most important things or they are getting them uh, delayed in time when it's, they're not useful anymore. Uh, Prince to Agile, Prince to Agile is about uh, is about um, finding the appropriate balance between the two uh, the two trends, uh, agreeing with the customer what is act from the beginning or in uh, in every point of uh, of um, comparison of the of the view, which is really relevant to them, what is uh, absolutely uh, necessary in a project as a production, what is actually uh, better to have in place to, you know, to have a better use of, of the other uh, requirement, and what is actually nice to have but not so relevant. This kind of description allows you to create a, um, the possibility to have your, your uh, um, to have your uh, uh, scope variable according to what the, what the customer prefers. Next, please. How does it work, this kind of uh, scoping uh, scope that is uh, uh, flexible? Uh, actually, it's uh, the, in, in, a, in a project uh, based on Agile or Prince to Agile, you have to have somewhere some, you know, flexibility. Uh, in uh, in many uh, traditional occasions, the flexibility is given by the fact that you arrive late or you spend more. Here, you fix the time and cost. So we may say that when you are in a situation where they tell you we have uh, a strict time deadlines, uh, we have this budget, uh, we are not going to to spend more. We cannot give you more time. That's an element of uh, application of agile. Uh, then you have you have to negotiate a little bit with risks and benefits, and uh, at the end you will have to find some flexibility, uh, telling what's absolutely relevant, what's absolutely necessary in terms of what you're actually production, what producing, and what's the quality level you cannot uh, 
uh, absolutely negotiate and what can be actually negotiated on it. And so this is where the lowest part of this picture is where a Prince to Agile um, project has got a certain amount of contingency where the top of it is fixed, is, is not going to flex. Next, please. Uh, another common concern in project is uh, uh, project usually do not fall into, you know, virgin environments. They usually get into uh, more uh, already uh, structured situation and often there is the concern should we go for a proper project or should we try to make our solution to evolve uh, changing it in production. Uh, this uh, this uh, decision making framework I'm, uh, I'm showing you is uh, included in the program of Prince2 Agile, is not Prince2 Things and not even Agile is another uh, source of, uh, of knowledge that's given to allow organization to understand how complex is according to this scale uh, is the situation and so they may decide if it's uh, pretty obvious on one side and so they can uh, actually handle the change as an evolution of the current uh, production environment without uh, going into a formal project and when it's complex, complex enough to justify a project approach. Next please. Uh, well we've seen, we can go straight so we are with timing to the next slide please. Uh, who's the target audience for this kind of, uh, of um, course or, or, or practice. For sure is for somebody who is pretty aware of Prince2 and uh, as I said before uh, you should you could start thinking Prince2 Agile when you want still want a governance uh, that cannot be negotiated too much of your project but you recognize that you have you have a strong limitation in terms of budget and time and you have uh, only a certain amount of tolerance in terms of quality and uh, on the other side you know that your your customer is going to change their mind or or to make their mind clear only during the project in this kind in this case uh, the agile tailoring of prince2 is a good idea talking about trainers you may accredit accred as a prince2 a, uh, agile trainer if you pass the exam and then uh, having a simple scope, scope uh, uh, extension interview um, being already a trainer you may go for it otherwise you have to go through the if you go in the next slide mm, please uh, to, to, to certify anyway you have to be a, a Prince2 practitioner uh, and uh, to, to get the certification you have to that the course is uh, is uh, is declared to be on three days, and on, on the third day, uh, you see the exam, which is uh, similar in structure to the practitioner one, is an objective testing exam with multiple choice, but articulated, not not like the foundation ones, and uh, they are based on scenarios, and you have uh, uh, four section. Uh, These sixty questions are organized in four sections. Uh, based on different uh, subjects and in two uh, hours and enough you're supposed to to see the exam and pass with 60 percent. Um, I, I wanted to thank you Francesco for the explanation, it was very clear, thank you very much. Um, we have a couple of questions that have come in uh, through the frequently asked uh, area and we see a couple of things saying um, how does Prince2 relate to uh, uh, how does Prince2 Agile relate to Prince2 in the wider PPM portfolio? And you see that it is an additional uh, program within the whole approach. And the question is, do you need a, a foundation or practitioner uh, qualification to go to Prince2 Agile? Basically, you need both, foundation and then practitioner for Prince2, and then you can go on to Prince2 Agile. And the last question that we had is, what languages will Prince2 Agile be available in? It's uh, going to be available in English only to start with and later on maybe there will be additions in other languages but for now that has not been planned so for now we can only confirm that it's going to be available in English. So looking at what we've done I think that kind of uh, concludes the, the, the content of our presentation today. Um, once again if you want to get hold of us here are some contact details very easy is to go to quintgroup.com or to respond to the email that you will be receiving from us within the next couple of days 
and there you can also find the link to the presentation that we had today. I'd like to thank you very much for your time and for your effort in uh, attending our webinar and hope to find you uh, attending one of our next ones coming up shortly. Uh, we're working on a number of new ones coming up, so hope to see you there again. Once again, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.